Now at 11, demand for change echoes throughout Portland and the nation. Rallies this weekend denounce hate against the Asian community. Also, a sweet Sunday for Oregon State. Both the Beavers men's and women's teams pull off massive March Madness victories. Plus, painting the picture of this past year, the work being done now to document the pandemic's place in history. This is KGW News at 11. But first here at 11, mystery in Clackamas County. Two men dead, a woman charged with murder. The question is, why? This is KGW News at 11. I'm Brittany Falkers. The shooting happened just before midnight yesterday near Happy Valley. Devin Haskins talked with neighbors about a night that quickly went from quiet to chaotic. It's, uh, there's always noise going on over there. Taylor Newborn has lived in the Reflections apartment near Happy Valley for a year. He says his neighbors moved in about six months ago, and since that time, it has not been quiet. I've heard like just banging and stuff, like things falling, arguments, typical yelling and stuff like that, but nothing crazy, nothing like out of the, or, or out of the ordinary. Newborn was sleeping and didn't hear the gunshots right next door. The sound of police running up his stairs woke him up. This is video given to us by the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. Like once I heard that uh, like shots were fired and I saw the medical examiners coming in, I realized like something serious had happened. Two men had been shot and killed. Identified today as 56 year old Jerry Burns of Milwaukee and 25 year old Connor Gaines of Happy Valley. This man, a few words, says he knew them both. We miss him. Police say 39 year old Amanda Gregson was responsible, but first they had to find her. So Clackamas County Sheriff's deputies knew that the woman they were looking for had taken off. Turns out a couple hours later, they responded to a welfare check here at the Monarch Hotel, basically meaning they were called to check on someone. That welfare check turned out to be the woman they were looking for. Gregson was inside the lobby of the hotel. Detectives have charged her with one count of first degree murder. I just can't believe something like this happened so close to me. Police have not said why Gregson did it or why they think she's responsible. In Clackamas County, Devin Haskins, KGW News. Tonight, Hillsborough police are asking for help finding a missing man who may be in danger. Miguel Harp was last seen last night around 640 by the Tannisborn Village. Police say he's medically fragile and depends on insulin. He's six feet, 180 pounds with brown eyes, brown hair and scruffy facial hair. He was wearing a green and gray hunting coat with a hood, blue jeans and a black knit hat. Please contact Hillsborough Police if you have information. Well, this was a weekend of healing around Portland and a demand to end hate against Asian Americans. Several events were held following the shootings in Atlanta, including one at Pioneer Square today. Tim Gordon takes us there. Lining the edge of Portland's living room, people held signs demanding the hate stop. It's a time to say no to racial discrimination, hate crime, and the violence to all Asian Americans. Hung Cheng Zhao is president of the Oregon Chinese Coalition. He says this demonstration is one of many the coalition is supporting locally and across the state. Here, a mother brought her four-year-old daughter, Nora. Because I, I am a Chinese people. As a kid, like, this is important for her. Like, everyone's equal. Yeah, it doesn't matter to like which skin, the color you have. It's important, yeah. Young, old, and in between with the same message at the square. I think that's a way together. We can make a difference. We can make change. A call to unify against a documented rise in violence against Asian Americans last year. And just over a week ago, continuing with the awful incidents in Atlanta, where eight people were gunned down, including six women of Asian descent. We need to stop the intimidation, discrimination, the fighting, the maiming, the killing of the innocent, law-abiding Asian Americans. At another rally at the gates to Portland's historic Asian Chinatown, Americans. a call to action. It's time for all of us to stand united, raise our voice, and shout out, stop Asian hate 
Now, this gathering by the Oregon Chinese Consolidated Benevolent Association brought two Multnomah County commissioners, including Lori Stegman. Uh, I was born in Seoul, South Korea. I was adopted when I was six months old. And this country is my home. And yet, many of us fear for our lives and our safety. Stephen they, Ying came to Portland from Hong Kong 50 years ago. No he says the Chinese problem. way is normally quiet. But this is the time we need to speak out and let our voice heard. We are not virus. Hatred is virus. Tim Gordon, KGW yeah. News. Now to the pandemic. Today, Oregon reported 224 new COVID cases and one death. State health, health officials also added more than 22,000 new COVID vaccinations. Oregon has now given out more than one and a half million doses. That's out of 1.8 million doses delivered. There are also 112 people hospitalized in Oregon with COVID, an increase of six people from yesterday. Oregon's COVID vaccine eligibility is expanding again tomorrow. Counties that have vaccinated most of their seniors 65 and older can move to the next group, which is 45 and older with underlying health conditions, along with frontline workers. Marion County is one that will make the move. Also on the 22nd, seasonal and migrant workers who are already working are eligible for the vaccine. It's a big day in Washington tomorrow. The entire state is moving into phase three of reopening. That means restaurants, movie theaters, and other indoor spaces can increase capacity to 50%. And larger indoor venues can have up to 400 people as long as masks and social distancing is enforced. Fans will also be allowed to attend sporting events again. And the increase to 50% capacity will be crucial for gyms. They say they've had to deal with long lines and wait lists for their customers due to the demand and limited spots available. This is especially problematic during peak times like weekday mornings and in the after work hours. Gym visitors will still need to wear those masks and stay so socially distanced, of course. And operators are hopeful that the new limits will get people to reactivate those memberships to help make up for money lost when they shut down. We've got a number of locations around the state that are 100 person wait lists multiple days a week. Now that maxes out what our wait list capabilities are. Now another change showering at the gym that will also be allowed again. All right, tonight Oregon State fans are celebrating a one-two punch of victories. Both the men's and women's teams won today in the NCAA tournament. Orlando Sanchez has a preview of the fun coming up tonight in Sports Sunday. What's good everyone? Sports Sunday is just minutes away and what a night it was for Beaver Nation. Buckle up because the 2021 Orange Express is cruising to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 1982. This is an unbelievable ride we're on. I just got a feeling that I don't want to stop. Well, the Oregon State women got the party started with a dominant performance, smashing Florida State in their tournament opener. And it's a fight, and that's that's what this is. Don't worry, Ducks fans. We didn't forget about you. The men and women of Oregon are working on a Monday. We'll talk about the big challenges that await the Ducks. Also, a night the Trailblazers will want to forget all about a franchise worst in Rip City. Plus, it'll look a lot more like Soccer City again. Fans will be back at Providence Park when the Thorns and Timbers kick off the season. Beware, things might get a little muddy on the show tonight. But kick back, relax, and grab some snacks because Sports Sunday, it's coming your way at 1135 right here on KGW. We'll see you then.